Well, investors doing a double take at Take Two this morning with a bigger than expected net loss tearing into the company's stock. You see it down more than 10% here. Joining us to discuss is Michael Pachter, Wedbush Managing Director, Equity Research. Uh, Michael, you know, when you think about where the numbers came down, I mean, part of this was also on um, the outlook for the company. How much of this is a red flag for the broader gaming sector? How much of this is specific to take two? Oh, you know, it's all over the place. It's a really good question, Akiko. Um, the core gaming business is much more uh, subject to release schedule. So, you know, when when they release games like Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption, they thrive. And when they go years without a big release, other than their their annual NBA game, uh, they have to you know they have to rely upon mobile revenues. And you know, their recently acquired Zynga is underperforming, and it's not. Zynga specific or Take Two specific, but but the numbers are all over the place. So so Take Two Mobile was down about ten percent sequentially, which is not normal. Normally things grow one or two percent sequentially. Um, EA was down twenty. Activision was up double digit. Uh, Playtica was down two percent. So everybody's all over the place, and we're trying to figure out why. Um, it it looks to me that the harder core games are doing pretty well. Uh, and the very super casual games are doing pretty well. But the kind of in-betweeners that are in mature markets like slot games are suffering pretty mm -hmm. mightily. And so is it permanent? No, I think that it's uh, consumers are pulling back on discretionary spend because they're worried about the economy and inflation. And my bias is starting tomorrow when the political parties are no longer advertising how bad the economy is, people are going to get more confident and things are going to kind of snap back quickly. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting take, Michael, when you're constantly hearing, right, that the economy is really bad, uh, certainly seeps into the sentiment, too. I mean, I'm also thinking about uh, where the comps are. I mean, when you think about where these companies have been the last few years, they have seen incredible growth. And what we're seeing right now is a sort of more realistic uh, of where things should be or are likely to be and that the last few years were simply just too elevated. Well, your, your previous guest, Carl, said it pretty well. Um, we're not going back to work the way that we did before. So, you know, we had we went from never being at, at home and having very little leisure time to play games to being stuck at home all the time. And now we're kind of in between. Um, and, and I think you're seeing kind of new constituencies um, it, becoming active in games, women over 50 playing, you know, slot games and Candy Crush, kids under 15 playing Roblox whenever they can. And, you know, I think that that's here to stay. Um, most people who are going back to work are going back to work two or three days a week. I'd say at least half the workforce, you know, that can get away with it is working from home a couple of days a week. And when we're at home, you know, we pick up the phone and we play games in between, you know, Yahoo Finance appearances, which I was just doing while I was <laughs> waiting. So, no, seriously, I mean, I think people find the time. And, and what we're really kind of, we've been surprised at the last five or seven years um, the second screen in the home, people play mobile games on the couch in front of the TV, you know, while they're watching football in between plays, they're playing mobile games. So, no, I think that the industry is very healthy. And back to your first question, I think take two is fine. I think this is a, a short term setback. I think they're going to start growing again as soon as probably the March quarter. And I think the stock is going to rebound. We did take our target down just to reflect uneven execution, but I'm at 140. Mm -hmm. You know, you're getting the stock under 100. That's a lot of upside in the next year. And I think that happens. I think you actually see that price target. Uh, really quickly, Michael, uh, these reports that uh, Microsoft's $69 billion buyout of Activision could potentially be in jeopardy. I mean, these are all just reports on a regulatory scrutiny, you know, how much credence do you put to that? And are you concerned at all? Zero credence, zero, zero. Um, Microsoft is not going to do anything to screw this deal up. It would, it would ruin their credibility. They will uh, allow Activision games to continue to be available on PlayStation. Um, I spoke to the CFO last night. He didn't say a word. He told me nothing. His body language, when I told him, gosh, if the deal doesn't go through, I, I hope we can keep working together, he scoffed at me. I mean, went oh, like that. The deal's going through. The body language is such. Um, the government has nothing that they can win in court as long as Microsoft agrees to make Activision games available on PlayStation. And they've already said multiple times they will do that. So a legally binding commitment to do that, the deal sails through. 
I don't think the FTC has the guts to sue. I don't think they will. And if they do, they lose. 